Hey guys, it's been a while since uh, we last talked. A lot has happened. Hopefully my room tour will be uploaded, but uh, if not, let me know because I can upload it. And yeah, so in December, I will, if you want, I will show you the office, the MTG Lion new sub office. I'll also show you the downtown office and a better example, my home office. So. My home office was really messy at the time of the video. But today I wanted to talk about why you cannot sell Brewster boxes. And I looked at the model, I've talked to many store owners, and the model is, so right now a lot of people think they can buy boxes and sell them. You can't buy boxes and sell them, there's no margins. Now if you have a dedicated fan base and they're willing to buy boxes for $80, that works because you bought the box for $76 and you're making money and they are all a subscription model. That's how a lot of these things, I just registered for Tokyo Otaku mode, which I'm buying figures from and they have Tom points and then they have like discounts, they have freight grant order iTunes cards they give you. There's a lot of like complicated stuff going on. Uh, the same can be said about even Star City Games where you can get trade credit. There's a way to kind of game the system to get the optimal return, uh, depending on what product you're selling, what product you're buying. Now, why most stores are not going to be able to sell a box for $100? $100 is the break even point for a box if you're buying at 82. You have to consider that you're hire, hiring employees, even if you pay them Walmart, Walmart wages, which is $8 an hour, I think you still need probably half an hour to look at it, print the invoice, there's ink, there's shipping, there's uh, handling, there is insurance probably on the box. And the greatest, greatest danger is if that customer no longer wants that box or feels like the box has been damaged in some way, customer returns are devastating. I used to trade foils on Magic Online Trading League and most people are very picky on the foils and I stopped doing foils in Power 9 this was years back when that was a popular trading site because people kept sending it back and you just had to take it. I mean, you just took the loss uh, and the loss was pretty bad because you paid, if it was an expensive card, you paid for shipping back and forth. If it's a box, you probably have to pay for shipping for the box to be returned to you. Now on top of this, uh, the concept that people can buy a box at 82, sit on it and then get to $100 and then sell it for money People are not considering eBay fees, TCG player fees. Even if that box of unstable goes to 100, you're not making money. You have to pay yourself. You have to pay shipping. You have to pay for uh, materials, uh, shipping materials, print label printers, stuff like that. You have to pay a, possibly an employee, right, to manage them and train them. And that's expensive. Our biggest expense in my company is training employees. Um, we hired two new employees and I'm going to talk a little bit more about them. They're, right now they're training to be marketers, but eventually once our website launches, which I need to work on Thanksgiving, I, said, I know I said that for a while, but um, yeah, they will be managing the website and the social media will be a lot better because then there'll be a full-time person doing it. So the concept that you can buy a box at 82, sell it at 100, you're losing money selling the box at 100 when you consider your time. It's not feasible. Uh, and that doesn't even consider storage space, um, possible damage if you have a dog, maybe they bite. Like, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. I, if you saw the room tour, I have lots of figures, but I have other figures that are kind of broken or sword fell or this fell, because I have dogs and that's just the way that figure collecting goes, right? The same with magic cards. I, I mean, my dogs have eaten some magic cards sometimes and, or a product gets damaged. Maybe you spill soda on it. Maybe a friend spills a soda on it. You can't, you can't sell a product. There's a lot of other hidden fees that are never mentioned. It's not as simple as I buy a box for 82, it goes up to hundred. I made $18. People who say it's that simple don't, if they understand, first of all, people who think that 82 to hundred for a box means you're making $18 has no, they've never sold a box before. It's really difficult to move boxes because you're competing 
against Mass Drop at 55, you're competing against Amazon at 70, you're competing against David Adams at 65. Five years from now, Unstable might be $100. It might be $120. You're still not going to make a profit because your loss of opportunity. You could have took the $100 or the $82 and invested in a CD and accumulated, let's say, 3%, 4% interest or maybe a government bond and you would have made more money, right? Profit. Profit, you would have made more money. So I don't know what people are saying all the time, but it sounds ridiculous because if you do the actual math, the only end result is you have a bunch of boxes that you sell back to the person who you bought the boxes for for half off or 33% off. Um, Rudy is probably one of the smartest YouTubers of Magic and uh, Magic YouTubers, and he understands this model. If he buys the box at $76, there's not much margin, but if he's buying these boxes from subscribers at half off, $40 a box, there's a lot of margin. And if you continue to buy from stores that go bankrupt, and I've been talking to a ton of stores that go bankrupt, and I understand the mechanics of it now. If you have capital to buy, you know, to, instead of, if you want to buy the boxes one by one, they would say $70 flat. But if you wanted to buy a thousand boxes, they can go down to 50. They're willing to take it just to get out of business because they feel like it's toxic. Anyway, that's it. Bye guys.